Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Malkwe of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams International, we meet behind the trade fair, behind Zenith College, at the Life Cathedral, at the Zoe Chapel. We meet on Sundays in the morning from 7 to 9 in the morning, and then from 10 to 12 for our second service. On Wednesdays, we meet at 6.30 to 8 p.m. In the evening. Join us for fellowship and I'm sure your life will be blessed. But this morning I, I want to talk about the bypass anointing. <laughs> the bypass anointing and that is not just the, uh, it's not by like B-Y-E but bypass B-Y-P-A-S-S. -S. How sometimes, I mean instead of going through this particular channel, I mean, maybe there is a blockade, there's something over there. You go through another channel. You bypass the obstacle. You bypass the challenge. You bypass the barrier. You bypass the opposition. You bypass something in order to achieve your goal. And that's what I'm talking about, the bypass anointing. Now, in Genesis chapter 28, the last time I shared, I shared on Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And I told you that for Isaac, I mean, for him to bless you, you have to do something that satisfies his soul. But this morning, I want to look at the other side of the coin because the Bible is a two-edged sword, so it cuts both ways. So now today, I want to look at the bypass anointing. In Genesis chapter 28, especially verse 13, Genesis chapter 28, now Jacob had stolen the birthright of Esau, and he had gotten a blessing from Isaac to take the uh, inheritance. And Esau was wroth with him, and Esau was was angry, I'm using biblical English now, R-W, you know, W-R-O-T-H, wrath. I mean, that's, that's a lesson of wrath. Now, Esau was angry. He was upset. I mean, he wanted to do something concerning Isaac. In fact, to kill him, he had murderous intentions So uh, towards Jacob. And Jacob had to flee. And the Bible said, in Jacob running away from uh, Esau, he came to a certain place. And the place where he came to, the Bible said, now at that place, when he laid down, he took a stone for a pillow. And then when he, he laid down to sleep, then the Bible said he had an open vision. He had an open heavens. The heavens were open. And then he saw a ladder. And then he saw the Lord. The Bible says something in verse 13, that the Lord came and stood at the top of this thing. And then the Lord said to him, I am the God of Abraham, your father, and Isaac. I am the God of Abraham, your father, and Isaac, and the, the land upon which you, you, you dwell today, I will give it to you and to your seed. Now, I'm intrigued by the, the, the statement of God. I am the God of Abraham, your father, and Isaac. Now, something didn't sound right to me. In actual fact, yes, the father's anointing, the one who started all things, the harbinger, of everything good that was happening to, the, to Israel was Abraham. That's good. The patriarchal anointing was, was Abraham. But Abraham was not the father of uh, um, Jacob. It was Isaac who gave birth to Jacob. So he should have said, I'm the God of Abraham, your grandfather, and Isaac, your father, and I will do this for you. But he said, he allocated fatherhood to Abraham and the real father, the one who sired um, uh, Jacob, he didn't give him that title or that tag. And that bothered me a little bit. So I'm scratching my head. Now here's the principle. God wants to do something very, very serious. God wants to communicate to a fugitive. God wants to earth a fugitive in blessing. Pin him to a blessing. God wants to do something about uh, Jacob. Now Jacob comes and when Jacob when God comes to town he said I'm the God of Abraham your father and he, he allocated fatherhood to Abraham he bypassed Isaac 
instead of saying, I'm the God of Abraham, your grandfather, and Isaac, your father, he went straight and he said, listen, the source of what I'm going to do for you is not Isaac. The source of what I'm going to do for you is not because of Isaac, but because of Abraham. This generational blessings that Isaac passed to, to no, Abraham passed to Isaac, and Isaac was supposed to pass to you people, you get it? There's something wrong with that generational blessing, and I was laughing. And here's the simple principle. Before Isaac blesses you, you have to do something to make him happy. So sometimes Isaac's soul, Isaac's desire, Isaac's pleasure can become a stumbling block to what God wanted to do. So God said to uh, uh, Jacob, listen, the generational blessings that I'm about to give you is not dependent upon your Isaac, your father. I'm tracing it back to the original, the pure bread, the one that has no adulteration whatsoever. He said, I'm going right to the source, and the source is Abraham. So I'm bringing a patriarchal blessing to you, and it doesn't come through Isaac. Because the, for Isaac to bless you, you have to do something to please him. So if you don't please him, he can curse you. And God said, I don't need this type of a blessing because of what I'm about to do for you. What I'm about to do for you is generational. What I'm about to do for you crosses the whims and the caprices of, of, of patriarchs. No, it, it, it don't, doesn't lie in their hands. And God said, I'm going to bless you in spite of Isaac. So I'm taking you back to the root. I'm taking you back to the source. And this is what I call the bypass anointing. Sometimes God gives people the ability to be a blessing to us. But one way, because of something or the other, they might choose not to do so. I can tell you one thing. I can guarantee you one thing. The God we serve has the potential and the capacity to bypass obstacles and be a blessing to you. I like that. It's very comforting. If God wants to bless me, you can either choose to be a channel or you can be a, a stumbling block. And when that happens, God will bypass you because he intends me to be blessed beyond the curse. He intends me to be blessed beyond every reason, beyond every shadow of doubt. And he's going to make sure that the blessing with my name upon it is going to be sent straight to my quarters. It doesn't pass through the hands of anybody. The bypass anointing is, is, is a dangerous anointing. The bypass anointing, the bypass that which bypasses people. The high priest in the days of Jesus thought that the only way of salvation was through their tutelage or listening. God bypassed them. They built a temple and then they put a veil in front of a temple in such a way that you can't see the Holy of Holies. When Jesus died, the veil of the temple was rent asunder. God said, listen, I'm bypassing, I'm bypassing the phylacteries of the, of, the, of the Pharisees, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I'm going beyond their hypocrisies. I'm, be, I'm going be, beyond their legalism. I'm going beyond this thing. I've ripped the veil of the temple asunder for you to have direct access to me. There's a blessing that is meant for you. No one can take it. And if anybody becomes a stumbling block, a rock of offense, try to stop the flow. The river will just meander by the side. The river of blessing will meander by the side of that. Bypass the obstacle and get to you. May this Christmas, may the years, may, the, may, may this season, festive season, see a bypass anointing move, of, anointed move of God in your life to reach you wherever you are. I thank God for the bypass anointing because it gives reprieve and gives release for some of us. See you later.